Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Over the last two weeks, our team has been traveling across Saskatchewan in preparation for the Cross Border Network Live Saskatchewan Provincial Election Night Special. During our journey, we connected with mayors, councillors, and other key stakeholders to understand how this election will shape the future of municipalities. And as the Saskatchewan election continues to unfold and enters into the final days of it, you certainly will need to stay informed with the Scoop Political Briefing newsletter. It is your go-to source for daily updates on the biggest political stories, party strategies, and yes, even candidate advertising. I certainly took advantage of it during our Cross Saskatchewan tour these last few weeks. So sign up for free at thescoop.ca. That's the S-K-O-O-P dot C-A. And the essentials will be delivered directly to you to your inbox every weekday. And today, we are joined by Warman Mayor Gary Filichuk, who will share his unique perspective on how this election is important to his community of Warman and its significance to the broader municipal landscape. Attention Saskatchewan. This election season, Municipal Affairs is hitting the road in partnership with SUMA for the Saskatchewan Provincial Election. Join us on election night for live coverage straight from Regina on YouTube featuring exclusive insights from municipal leaders and stakeholders across the province. We will be capturing their reaction to the results and be diving into what the new provincial government means for municipalities. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan to hear directly from local leaders about the issues that matter most to you. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan starting September 30th to hear directly from local leaders like yourself about the issues that matter most. This is your election covered like never before. Municipal Affairs, your trusted voice from the grassroots to the government. Congratulations on your re-election uh, as the mayor. <laughs> Acclamation, re-election. Um, now that you're officially at the head of the table for another four years, what are you looking for from this provincial election from the two party leaders or three party leaders that you hope that can build your relationship a little bit stronger in the next four years to come? Well, we've, we've been strong advocates over the, the years and really healthcare has probably been our main push. Uh, fair funding would also be another one. We, we've had some challenges with uh, it really being a lottery sometimes. And, and I know some of that's at a federal level, but even at the provincial level, the decisions are made for ISEP funding. And so we're just looking at a fairness and funding, finding ways of supporting cities that are thriving and regions that are doing really well. And, and I think that uh, we want to be a part of that funding. Now with healthcare, we were the only cities without any SHA facilities in the province. So I think uh, having healthcare taken care of north of Saskatoon will really alleviate some of the pressures within Saskatoon. And we've had a strong team of uh, advocation that advocating uh, over the uh, last while that uh, we've been pushing in that direction. I think those are the main ones. I mean, uh, you know, uh, we're always looking at more roadways and highways and things in that area as we continue to grow that we'll, we'll have those communications. Uh, education is not really under our umbrella, but it's the one that we'll, we, we start to hear about our schools filling up and we've done our role of uh, increasing our uh, population in our area. So those will be on our radar too in the near future. I want to talk about healthcare for a second because it seems to be a reoccurring theme, not just here in Norman, but across the province when it comes to rural and remote healthcare. Um, what tangible item would you want the next government to address on day one if the next government comes to you and says, Gary, what can we do for you to make healthcare a little bit more easier for the people of Warman? Well, number one would be doctors. We, we actually have facilities. We have private people that stepped up, built facilities that are that are adequate. Now, it's really the recruitment of doctors or even more nurse practitioners. Right? So personnel, day one, would change us completely. And in a lot of ways, we would be that buffer to, add to having to head to Saskatoon with that. So, so it would be something that I think from the beginning would really help. And then the next level would be to have a facility that, you know, that, that first stop, we'll call it an urgent care center. We'll maybe we call it primary care. We're not sure, but whatever re really helps within the whole, uh, you know, whole healthcare area for this region that we really support that. Do you get a sense that you're being heard 
do you get a sense that the party leaders are addressing this? Because I know Scott Moe has come out, Premier Scott Moe, the leader of the SAS party, has come out with uh, key platform issues around health care. But are you seeing anything that's a tangible item that you can latch on to and say, you know what, this could be good for Warman? Well, I, th I think that's the nice thing about uh, elections. It really does bring things to the surface, and I think some of the things that were uh, being challenged over a long period of time, and that's the thing. You, it's hard to talk about what the previous governments have done when now you've been in power for so long. So this is yours in, in a lot of ways. And, and, and with that, uh, I, I'm not naive to say that COVID had its challenges, and, and, and this is not a problem of just Saskatchewan and Warman. This is, this is a problem throughout, throughout North America and the world. Uh, but, but it is something that we need solved. And so are we being heard right now? Um, I, we, we do have some contacts at, at uh, provincial levels, but that'll all start over after the election. And uh, we definitely want to hold them to their promises. And, and they really do seem to be talking about health care as one of the main priorities. Two weeks left as of recording this until the actual vote happens on Monday, the 28th of October. Is there something locally here that you're hoping that the local candidates will address, whether it be that health care or is there a certain local issue that's truly in the municipal realm? And I say that knowing that health care is not, but is there something in the municipal realm that you want the local candidates to address? Well, and I think I've mentioned both of them too, and that would be that that funding for facilities that really look beyond, that really hit our budget. You know, what we're taking on an expansion to our hockey rink and we're paying 100% of that where you know other people are getting 75% of that covered so we were at a breaking point that uh, our building's 10 years old and we needed to either deal with the expansion or move on to something else and so we did take that on we have the pressures of growth and uh, so we want that fairness of funding that so we'd like to hear how those types of things could be in place to even try and rectify some of that. Uh, then obviously the healthcare. I, you know, I've had the calls that uh, we just need more personnel. And if we had the doctors in place that here's the plan of being able to provide this type of healthcare service within our city is something we would look to. And I think you brought up that we talk about real, uh, rural and remote. We're caught in that buffer. They use the rural and remote when it's suitable to them, but they also use you as an urban when it's suitable for, for them too. So it's so we got caught both ways as Warman and even Martinsville that I think that we just want to see better things in that type of area. So I, I think that those are ones that if we hear some uh, policy ideas to come out of from our local candidate, it would be nice to see. Final question, and you have one election coming up on the 28th and one in November for a new city council. You've been acclaimed, so the council candidates will be out door knocking here soon. What do you want your residents to think about before they cast that X or that check mark beside that name of their potential next MLA or their next councillor? Well, first of all, get to know your candidates and, you know, spend the time to understand where they're coming from. You know, what are, are you being heard? Do they represent you? Uh, what are the issues that they have and what are the things? And really at a party level too. Now, municipal is a little bit different it, and it does go back to getting to know the people. So, so I, I do appreciate that we'll have our 150 word descriptions and pictures out next week. And, and that's a starting point. But reach out to them. If they put their phone numbers in emails and you have questions or comments, don't be afraid to send it out to all of them and, and hear from all of them and then we also have our candidates forums for both both levels that I get out there and participate listen and, uh, and and have discussions with that after reflective discussions before making your decision thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of municipal affairs we just want to take a moment and ask you to do one quick favor for us if you haven't already be sure to hit that subscribe button you will not want to miss the upcoming episodes around the saskatchewan election but also you will not want to miss our special election night special live from downtown regina where we will be discussing how this election will impact the municipal landscape over the next four years. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And if you're listening to this on audio, head over to our YouTube channel, Cross Border Interviews or Cross Border Networks, and subscribe today. And if you haven't already, be sure to head over to the scoop.ca and get that insightful newsletter delivered directly to you every weekday directly to your inbox. I use it as a resource when I was traveling across the province of Saskatchewan, and it is a resource that you surely will want to have. And your support has been wonderful over the last few weeks. And 
over the last few months and even last few years. So we truly appreciate you taking time and watching and listening to all these great episodes and great interviews that we've been putting out. So stay connected, stay informed, and we'll see you next time here on Municipal Affairs. Mm-hmm.